Hello wonderful person, this is Anton and in today's video we're going to be using a tool known as Gravity Simulator to try to simulate the idea of planets and I guess stars being created from nothing but a dust cloud. So this is actually a pretty cool free tool that you can use yourself and I'm going to demonstrate it to you in this video. Welcome to What The Math. <laughs> Now before I actually go into the Gravity Simulator, I wanted to tell you a little bit about the Test Tube Games. This is actually an indie developer that focuses on making a variety of science games. In other words, they try to make science fun. They have actually quite a few games here and a lot of them are very original in that they actually try to use scientific concepts in uh, creating various arcade and uh, simulation games. This one here, for example, uses various electromagnetic concepts to um, help this octopus uh, go through various levels and survive um, various challenges. This here, Velocity Raptor, uses the um, general relativity concepts of time dilation and um, space dilation to basically help this raptor go through various levels, and this introduces the idea of evolution. I haven't really tried all of them, but I know that most of them are kind of original and kind of fun. This is the one we'll be using. It's called Gravity Simulator. It is for the most part free, but there is a version that you can buy that has slightly uh, more advanced features, but I'm, also, I'm just going to be using the, um, the free version. And also, th this particular simulation has its own forum where you can kind of get more levels and more um, ideas and more suggestions from other users as well. But so, okay, here we go. This right here is, um, it's essentially kind of like Universe Sandbox, but much simpler and in two dimensions. You can pretty much change anything for any of the objects. I can, for example, make this star a lot more massive and suddenly everything collided with it. I can also just go ahead and uh, create a completely new uh, level. Uh, and here we can totally just go for this sun, earth, and the moon, and you'll see that it's a slightly different simulation. Or you can add your own stuff. Here, I can just take a planet, put it right here, and I guess it's just going to fall into our star in the middle, our, our sun. So you can pretty much change everything. It's very, very dynamic in that sense. Uh, it has a variety of components you can add. It also has a variety of modifications for every object. So for example, here I can totally just go into one of the stars and change its, change its parameters or completely delete it actually. And this will throw off my whole balance into chaos. Although I did create one single um, star system right there. But what I wanted to show you in this video is, well, it is actually from this, uh, from this one of the pre-made codes. It's actually right here. It's, it's called massive disk. Now, first I'm going to show you the default setting here, and we're going to load this, and you'll see that right away it starts creating what seems to be a solar system, or if you squint your eyes, maybe even a galaxy. So, this is essentially um, a procedurally generated disk of particles that then starts colliding and combining into a variety of other shapes. And this is exactly what I wanted to use the simulation for, because I wanted to show you how just a bunch of dust can actually create uh, objects that will then turn into planets. Now, we're, we're going to modify this a little bit. We're, we're going to add more objects. We're going to reduce the velocity a little bit. And this is why I like Gravity Simulator, because it allows you to actually modify everything with a simple code. So here, I'm going to go into Massive Disk. I'm actually going to copy this. And now we're going to add a new simulation and uh, paste the code we just um, copied. So this is a, this is actually really, really simple to modify. So it's all code based. It's all very, very, very simple. Now, I don't really know what language this is based on, but nothing that I'm familiar with, but it is a very, very simple um, computer language. So here we have um, the maximum radius of the disk. This will, I guess we'll just keep this as, as what it is right now. The minimum radius will also stay at zero. But we are going to change the mass. I'm going to change the maximum mass from 10 to let's just say 2 because we want to have smaller particles. And this is velocity, which we're going to change to, let's say, 3. Number of particles, let's let's increase it to like 4,000 just to make it a little bit more interesting and interactive. And the rest of the um, settings will keep the same. So now if I load this, you'll notice that it is going to be a little bit different. As a matter of fact, it's slower for one. 
but it is a lot more massive and moves a, lot, a little bit slower, things are interacting a little bit differently. But you'll notice right away that things start clumping together. And this is actually what I was kind of aiming at. I was going to help you visualize how even in the massive procedural generated disk, with time things just kind of start clumping. And in the middle we will have this large uh, object that would eventually become either a star if this is a solar system or a central region with a black hole if this is a galaxy. And on the outskirts we get these objects that will eventually become planets. Now the most massive of these will probably become something like a gas giant like Jupiter with its moons. The um, medium mass ones will probably become terrestrial planets, especially if they're closer to the center here. And the smallest ones on the outskirts will probably become dwarf planets. Now if I were to run this over and over every single time you'll get these chunks. It's just it's natural for these chunks to form. And this is something I was never able to simulate in Universe Sandbox. I've tried so many times to have these chunks form, but it really took a two-dimensional approach for this to actually appear and create these real, um, relatively realistic looking objects. Now, so I actually want to see if I can try this a few times. You'll notice one of the chunks in the middle here is approaching the central region. Um, and we might even place like an object in the middle just to simulate a star just for fun. But I want to try this a few times just to see if we can create something that does look like an actual um, solar system. But here I can actually just place the um, star in the middle and observe what happens. So let's actually see what happens. Okay, it's kicking out some of the objects. As a matter of fact, uh, this is kind of what happened when our sun became uh, the sun. As soon as the star was formed, because of the um, sudden increase in radiation, it actually threw off a lot of the material to the outskirt of the solar system. And this is exactly what you see happening right now. Now, it's not exactly the same reason here. The reason here is because of the sudden, uh, very, very massive object that is interacting with the particles in the middle. But it does give you an idea of what actually happened in um, early on in the creation of our own solar system. Uh, now, one unfortunate shortcoming of this particular simulation is that it doesn't seem to have a uh, um, uh, fast forward. It has a rewind, it has a pause, but no fast forward. So in other words, we have to kind of deal with the real time approach here. But nevertheless, I think this is pretty clear visually at least that we are slowly creating a relatively uh, realistic solar system. And the planets right there will start forming into planets as well. And a lot of the particles in the middle here, they'll actually get absorbed by the, uh, by the central star. And the other particles that are clumped together will start forming planets. And you can see they're already kind of slowly orbiting around the star. All right, let's try this again. Let's maybe change some of the parameters and see if we can create something a little bit different. We're going to try this again. So load from code. Except this time I'm going to only choose very, very small particles and also decrease their velocity even more. And we're going to see if this affects anything. So here we go. Ready? And, and as you can see, it kind of started collapsing almost instantly. And that's because the velocity of the particle is not as high as before. And in this case, it's creating a slightly different looking um, shape. And I guess in this case, it is kind of a solar or star system, but it's also possible that this is how galaxies are formed as well. And within a few seconds, we basically ended up creating a somewhat similar shape. So there is some chunks right here, which will become dwarf planets and planets. There is a very, very large central region and something that resembles a star or a central black hole in the middle. All right, so th this one wasn't as fun though. I think maybe I should try to increase the velocity instead. So let's try this one more time. And this time we increase the velocity, increase the maximum mass a little bit and change this parameter to two. So here we go. And I, I believe COL stood for color. I actually thought it was um, collision, but I was wrong. And look at that. We actually created what seems to be a galactic arm in the middle. That was pretty cool. Didn't expect that. So this is a little bit uh, different. As a matter of fact, it's very different. And this appears to have created 
a very interesting system that is in a sense more galactic in shape than it is uh, like a star system but it definitely created more chunks and a lot of these chunks resemble what would probably be uh, considered to be the star burst regions in a galaxy where essentially you get new stars forming regularly and creating these very very large globular clusters and in the middle once again we get a kind of a galactic um, center if you were to look at this from a perspective of a solar system this would be a kind of a star system that had quite a lot of um, relatively medium and large sized planets and all of this was because the initial velocity of the dust was higher than than it was um, in the beginning and just for fun let's actually increase this uh, velocity just a little bit again and see if it changes what we create um, in this particular simulation so we're going to change this to uh, 0 0.09 but actually i just wanted to show you one more thing first of all you can actually change the way gravity behaves as well so this is what makes this game very very interesting it allows you to change your physics to the way you see them fit i'm not going to do this right now but you could actually technically completely reverse the um, gravitational attraction and making it a gravitational repulsion which is something that you want to may want to play around with if you actually download this simulation all right so here we go this is with velocity much higher than before and I guess because the velocity is higher, you don't really see as much actual cloud, but you do see a lot more clumps. And because the particles are flying away from each other really fast, this kind of creates a very interesting, very unusual shape. It's almost as if um, something in the middle exploded. Now, um, galaxies that don't have enough dark matter in the middle often look like this. As a matter of fact, this is a very common shape for galaxies that are dark matter poor. Galaxies that do have a lot of dark matter that kind of keeps things together look a lot more like this. And this is kind of very common for galaxies with uh, a lot more dark matter in the center. So here, because the velocity wasn't as high and because a lot of the material was being held inside, the actual galactic core and a lot of the stuff around it is a lot more condensed. Now, obviously, this applies to um, star systems as well, but because dark matter doesn't play a big role in formation of star systems, and in this case, what we actually were able to create is something that looks very different. So there is a very large uh, object right here. There's also a few smaller objects here and there, and the rest of the particles are flying away by themselves, and most of the mass is concentrated in the middle. So this would be an example of a galaxy that has high dark matter content. But let's go back and talk about solar and star systems instead. So let's actually create one last one. And this time we've created something that already has quite a lot of spin in the middle. So this is a slightly more realistic representation of a star system as it's been developed. So once again, you see uh, planetary objects forming and spinning around one another. You see the central region here that's forming into a star and um, smaller dwarf planet-like objects that are flying away. The smaller particles will probably turn into things like comets and uh, distant asteroids. The larger objects will very likely become planets. And usually this doesn't take very long. This probably takes less than a million years to kind of start forming. And within, within about um, several million years, all of these objects will form into um, protoplanetary and uh, proto-dwarf planetary bodies, with the middle becoming a protostar. Uh, within about 10 million years, this will become a star. And as we saw before, it will then start kind of pushing away a lot of the particles in this fashion. So a lot of the central particles will start escaping. And um, many of them will turn into more comets and more distant asteroids. So this is essentially how um, star systems form, how our own solar system formed in the beginning from the dust cloud. And if you were to look at the bigger, grander scale of things, this is how galaxies form as well, from a huge, huge dust of particles. Now, in this case, for some reason, I guess there was more mass, so my star in the middle started moving around a lot. Now, let's actually see what happens at the end. But that's pretty much it, and that's pretty much all I wanted to show you in this video, and that's using Gravity Simulator that you can find in the link in the description below. It's a free app, go try it out, and let me know what you think. If you do create something cool, you can totally post uh, one of these codes that we saw 
right here in the description below and let us try it as well, especially if it's something interesting. Come back tomorrow to learn something else, subscribe if you still haven't, and share this video with someone who enjoys watching space videos. I'll see you guys tomorrow. Looks like this uh, star system didn't really become as cool as I thought it would, but doesn't look too bad. See you guys tomorrow, space out, and as always, bye bye. I'm gonna add a few planets and actually give them a little bit of velocity as well, because you can totally do this very easily by dragging their vector in this way. And this will actually accelerate the object in that direction. So in that sense, uh, this particular simulation is very, very user friendly. So let's create an actual star system using these planets that we just added manually as well.